This is the Dean the Dean Show. This is the Dean the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show. And we're here in Buffalo, New York, my hometown, alhamdulillah, where I was born. And I'm here with our next guest who's coming up on the show. We interview people from all over the globe who've accepted the fastest growing way of life in the world. Submission to the will of God, that complete system way of life that connects you to the creator of the heavens and earth. And our next guest went from... Now I'm telling you, look, when we know what worship is, you understand what he was doing. Okay, so the man grew his hair out. Why? Because he was following Bob Marley. Most of you know the legend singer, Bob Marley. So he went from almost worshiping this man to Islam. We want to hear his story. So we're going to come back. Don't go anywhere. Here with our brother David on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing, brother? Alhamdulillah. I'm happy to be here. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Mashallah. Bob Marley. For the people that don't know who Bob Marley is, tell us. Well, he's a legendary singer, you know what I mean? Um, he was from Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, he came with the uh, Rastafari. And uh, me growing up, when I was about 17 years old, I really caught on to this. I uh, started listening to a lot of the reggae music and I uh, ended up growing some uh, Twisted Drizz. Then I cut that and then I went to go to True Rastafari and start growing my natural hair and just let it all wild out. Like, it, was, it was a mess almost. But um, I was just a, a truth seeker and I'm a soul searcher. So um, when I seen that uh, it wasn't something right about it, I had to go look more and more and find out, okay, what's the truth? So then I went growing up into Christianity. And then from there, that's what I lit, went to uh, Rastafari. And then after Rastafari, I went to uh, what you would call a uh, Garveyite. I was with some so-called Garveyites. And um, what that was, was Marcus Garvey himself is a progressive man. He was more about uh, building uh, stores and businesses for the African people living in America. But the people I was with were more um, like trying to use racism to fight racism. And that doesn't work. And it put a lot of hate in my heart, actually. And um, it, was, it actually, then after that, I realized that's not the truth. And I kept on searching, kept on searching. And I finally came to Islam, which saved my life. A brother from the corner store, by the way, Brother El Hamri, he, um, he gave me a, a Quran. And then when he gave me the Quran, I started reading it. And then I seen that this right here is the word of Allah. This is the truth. And then from there, um, I came in another, uh, like a couple months later, I ended up taking my Shahada. And I really felt a light enter me. I felt like a new man right then and there. And I couldn't stop smiling the whole day. And then from there, I just been, um, just keep on learning, keep on learning, you know what I mean? Because you have to learn from the cradle to the grave. It's, you can never stop. And um, I'm just so happy, mashallah, it's just a, a blessing to be here. Because I know Allah, he could have just kept the, my eyes closed. He could have kept my eyes closed and I would have never seen Islam. So um, I'm, I'm very happy. And uh, I know that it took a while for me to find the truth, but I'm happy I found it. MashaAllah, tell us now, for those people, let, let's back it up a little bit. Because I opened the show and I said, you almost were like worshiping this man. Yeah. So people don't understand when we say worship, you know, what that means. Like, because we try to reclaim our heart yeah. from worshiping the material things, from worshiping the creation, and only worshiping the creator, right? So now you got Bob Marley. And people, he was like a, a, an icon, right? Yeah. And, and a big time celebrity, and I mentioned your hair. Yeah. He had like this, this. Yeah, the, the natty dread. So what, what made you want to do that? What made you turn to like just idolizing him? How did that start? Well, it started off with me, um, you know, listening to the reggae and, um, I was just trying to find, I was just trying to get more into the, my culture, you know what I'm saying? I was just trying to learn more about Africa, and then I hear uh, the reggae music, and um, I'm not disputing it by any means, but um, what happened was it ended up leading me first to worship in uh, Haile Selassie, who was, a, who was the emperor of Ethiopia, but in reality that's Shirk. 
and I didn't even realize this because I didn't know what Shirk meant at the time. And it was through Bob Marley's music, which led me to literally worshiping Haile Selassie. I. And um, he himself even is his name? Haile, Haile, Haile Selassie. Selassie I. Now, who is that again? That's the emperor of Ethiopia. Oh. And um, before he was Haile Selassie, I, he was Ross Tafari Makonan. Ross means head and and. Uh, Tabari meant to be reverenced. So that's how the whole thing came along. And so the uh, Jamaicans end up come, started to worship him and um, they started growing out their dreads. Even though he himself didn't have the locks, I guess they started growing the locks. And um, it, was just, it just was a culture thing where all of a sudden I just came on to it and I just started uh, really trying to find out more about Rasta. So then I started growing my natural hair and it was through the music. And um, I ended up having like Bob Marley posters everywhere. I ended up, um, I was just really into it and to a point where it took a while, but finally, mashallah, I saw the truth. And by doing that, it just changed my life because my whole thought process has changed now. And now I know there's only one God and that's Allah. And it's not even about worshiping no man because Allah doesn't come in the form of man. Allah is the, 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 the most merciful. He's, a, he's the gracious, he's the most magnificent. He, can't, he won't come in the form of us. So um, I'm just happy I seen Islam is the truth. Yeah, mashallah. We're going to take a break. And for many of the not yet Muslims on there, they don't know. See, when we say Allah, I mean, if you just, you know, open your mind, you see that Jesus, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. he spoke Aramaic and he would say, you know what he would say? Allah. Mm. Allah, Allah. And Jews and Christians who are Arabic speaking, they use the word Allah. So we're not worshiping no moon god or nothing. Nope. We're worshiping the creator. Amazing. We're going to continue on with your story. We're going to take a break. We're back with David here on The Dean Show. But uh, you figure out that, uh, you know, man has to have a purpose. If you were to take away mosquitoes from the planet, within yeah. a few months, everything dies. If everything. you just took away what? The mosquito. The that, mosquito. That's a fact, right? Th that's a fact. Mosquitoes. 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 But if you take away mankind, nothing happens. So this whole ecosystem, this whole wheel, this whole cycle, doesn't need you. So why are you here? Back here on The Dean Show with our brother David, continuing on with your wonderful story. So we know that when one accepts the way of life that Jesus was upon, Abraham, Moses, and all the other messengers that the Creator sent to guide humanity because He loves humanity. And God didn't send messenger, mess, conflicting messengers. All of the messengers came with the same message. Worship the Creator, not His creation, and do good. Be good. Be upon what God sent. And there's certain rituals that we do, the prayer, the fasting, and all of that produces good. To be good to your neighbor, to be good to your family, you know, to feed the poor, you know, to do all of these things to help you develop to be the best human being possible. Now, that you can look back when you were following Bob Marley and how do you get Rastafari. Rastafari. 
there's certain rituals now that you look back. Oh yeah. I, Talk I, to us about some of these rituals and what did they produce? I'll I mean, a pot is a big, big thing about it, I'll right? Tell you. Music and all these things. Talk to us about it. Well, first off, you, we don't have to get into the details, but yeah. <laughs> I was going to let you know that it is a ritual, basically, because it, it it comes with the herb smoking, and it comes with um. For the people that we got some some uh, uncles here, or some elders, and they don't know what was that uh, pot herb, herb well, smoking. Cannabis, uh, marijuana. It's a lot of words. Weed. I mean, it's a lot of ways you could put it, but um. Dope, huh? Yeah, yeah, basically. And so, I mean, I was, I guess, just so high out of the mind, I didn't even know what reality was. I mean, it had me basically bow down to a man basically and um you know and it and it, mashallah as, as soon as i came to islam as, as soon as i took the shahada it took the taste out of my mouth and um i just completely changed because there was two things i never planned on changing in my life one was i planned on growing my dreads till they till i died and um two was i never end up i never planned on stop smoking herb i mean this was something that had my family all distraught like they was really upset about this you know what i mean like and it, when I came to Islam, I didn't even want to do these things. You know what I'm saying? It's like, not that I didn't need to, I just didn't want to. And so just growing on in my life, it was just a process. It was just a process coming in, like I said, from Christianity, then to Rastafari. And then from there, I was, like I said, with the Garveyites. And um, then that's when I like was more of getting away from Rasta and more into just trying to be like uh, more of um just a black nationalist and but with this right here the people i were with i was with um they were actually in reality counter-revolutionary con artist black capitalist dogmatist and that's the full title because it was more like a con game and um even at one point in time they even told me what they was giving me wasn't even legit but i'm so into whatever i put my life into that i was ready to if it wasn't for islam i would probably be gone in two or three years just because i was just so ready to just like I hated the world almost. And um, me, myself, personally, I look at myself as a revolutionary in the sense that that means change and that means to do about in a process like peace. And I know that there's injustice, I know there's fascism, and I'm the type of guy who wants to just rid away all evils and bring about Islam. And I know that Islam is the answer, and I know the people need it to know the truth. So that's how come I want to put myself in a position to help the people and do whatever I can and just be a vessel and just spread this light because I know that it's, it changed my life. And I know if it can change my life, it, could, it can change everybody's life. Absolutely, absolutely. And most people don't know that Muslims, and Muslim is simply an Arabic word, which means one who has submitted to God. And Islam, for the not yet Muslims who are watching us, is something that Jesus was upon. When you learn that, wasn't that fascinating? What do you mean Jesus was upon Islam? Because every messenger submitted to the will of God. And that's what Islam means, submission to the will of God. Right? Yes. Not to a human being, not to a man, a monkey, a stick, or a stone, or to Bob Marley, yeah. but to the Creator. Exactly. And didn't, now, you made an interesting turn because, okay, you're following Bob Marley, and then he actually becomes, he went towards Christianity? Yeah, he went to Christian. Matter of fact, um, that's, yeah, that's, that's another thing. Um, him in his life later on, in the final stages of his life, he actually went to the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church. And that's more of the Orthodox Christianity. And actually, that's where I ended up going to in, in Buffalo because I was, like I said, whatever I put my life into, I want to go 100%. And so I went into uh, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which is similar in some ways, but the part of, that they're wrong with is still the shirk because, I mean, they have the women with their hair wrapped up, they still prostrate, but yet they still giving their thanks and praises to Esau, and we know that it's you give your things and praise to the one God, which is Allah, and and there's no partners with no partners, and um, so then from there I um I was learning some am um, Herik, um that's like the Ethiopian uh, language. And I, was, and I have books on it. I got actually a I'm Herik dictionary because I really want to know the language. And um, inshallah, one day I'll still be able to go to Africa, but it's going to be for a different agenda. Now I want to just go around the world to show people Islam. I want to first go to Mecca and complete my five pillars of faith. And um, but I plan on really just spreading this truth to the whole four corners of the world, inshallah. And hopefully Allah makes it easy for me because my heart is, is, is for the people and it's just to, to change this reality, to transform this paradigm. MashaAllah, we see the zeal in you, and hopefully people have gotten a little bit stagnant with their, you know, with their deen and taking it for granted. They can see this gift when somebody investigates and they do their homework and they conclude that, you know what, this Qur'an, the verbatim word of God, is not from a human being, but it's from the creator of the heavens and the earth. Islam is not a man-made religion organized by man or men, but it's indeed a system, a way of life that's from the creator. We're going to appreciate it more. So it's fun. a gift like you do. You can see you're just excited about it. So what was it about this way of life, Islam, submission to the will of God, that convinced you finally that it, it took you over and you're like, you know what, this, this has got to be from the Creator. What was it? 
But it was, was, it was just the fact that I seen that it was just a brotherly love. You know what I mean? It wasn't no backstabbing. I mean, it came to a point where in time where like, say uh, some, a brother gave me something, I'm like, all right, brother, I'll pay you back. No, no, I don't want your money. I, I want the blessing from Allah. And it was just time and time again, just the generosity, just a true brotherhood. The fact that the masjid is open every single day. It's not open for just one day out of the week for three hours. It's open nonstop. And from Fajr to Isha, you could go in and learn. And I, I just love it. And that's how I am. Cause like I'm a truth seeker and I want to stay in inside where I could get this knowledge, this obligatory knowledge of Islam so I could just stay strong on his deen because there's nothing like Islam and nothing else would have changed my life but Islam and um, I'm just so happy that like I said Allah opened my eyes to it because I could have just been left uh, deaf, dumb and blind and I could just be a, a wanderer in the wilderness but he showed me the way, he, he, he showed me the spiritual path, the road to righteousness and it's my job to just stay on it and so that um, one day, inshallah, I can make it to Jannah. Because with me, I don't want to just be in Jannah. I want to be in the presence of Allah. I want to be one with the Creator. I want to be in the highest level of Jannah. Because just being in Jannah to me wouldn't be good enough. I want to be in the highest level. I want to do whatever I can now in the dunya so that I can make it to the farthest level I can in Jannah. So that's how I am. And, and that's what all the messengers of, of God brought and taught. They called people to be attached to the Creator and not His creation and be striving for its paradise to be the best in this world that you can be, to be excellent doctors, lawyers, engineers, whatever. But don't sell yourself out. You sell your honor, your soul, your dignity. Look, for, for this life, because pretty soon it's going to be over. You're going to have to leave. You can't take it when you, when you go, right? right? So work hard for the hereafter. Be the best in this life. And that's what this way of life is, is calling us to, to really reflect. And you're doing that now. So tell us when you hear, like when you turn on Fox News, CNN, and, and, and you hear some of these stereotypes, some of these, you know, things that are attributed to Islam, they say, hey, look, have you had some resistance? People are like, oh, now you're a terrorist. Have you ever heard some of these, yeah, this baloney, phony? What, what, what do you got to say about that? Well, me personally, I was always someone who was vocal about these things. I always spoke out about these things. Even before I came into Islam, I already seen the injustice because I know that the TV is just an illusion. It's just a, a beast. And it's tell lie vision because they tell lies to your vision. And um, I never was with that. I already knew that Islam was a religion of peace. And how can someone be a terrorist when they're defending their, their, their country, their people? The terrorists are the ones who's bombing people day in and day out, sending drones over, killing innocent women and children. Those are terrorists. But now if Muslims say that. Now they're looked at as the terrorists because people are like in the matrix tricks and they don't know the truth they, they haven't woken up and for me I already knew even before coming into this deen that Islam was never like that but now being a Muslim I really see it's not like that we're generous kind loving people and for me to be even a, a revolutionary would be for them to try to point a finger and say I'm I'm some terrorist guy why because I want change because that's what a revolution is is a change and so you know I mean they always try and give us a bad look but if you know of uh, the history of, of Allah's people they were usually always the ones that was being persecuted so people should look at that and say well you know what if Islam is getting such a bad rap, maybe this is the truth because everything's reversed in this reality. The things that they make good, they they have it be bad. And the things that is bad, they make it look good. And that's just how it is. So they should people should really look at more into Islam and see what it's about. And like you said, self-development, that's what it's about. Do you see yourself having better character? You're kinder to your parents. You know, you're just a better human being overall. You're kinder, you're more merciful, and you have this peace? Yes. I definitely look at myself as a kinder person, you know, because um before Islam, I was um, just too headstrong, you know what I mean? It was either like my way or the highway. Um, uh, stop for a lot, gave my parents a hard time sometime, you know what I mean? And um, even sometimes disrespectful, and it hurt me at the time, but I didn't know how to really change. And then when I came into Islam, it allowed me to really just apologize to them. It allowed me to really just open up more to them and, um, you know, listen more, you know what I mean? And not just think I know everything, because as soon as you realize that you don't know anything, that's when you're open up to learn everything, because when you have an open mind, you can absorb everything around you. But when you're closed mind and tunnel vision, you're going to have a lot of things pass you through. So with me, I opened up my heart and my mind and I just Islam really just changed my character it allowed me to just change things that was going to lead me down and allow me to just stay doing things that's going to bring me up we're going to take a break David and we'll be right back with more of David's story here on the Dean Show so as the last and final messenger sent to mankind the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he told us to really reflect often about death reflect upon the destroyer of pleasures. Many of us are delighting in our lusts and our passions. We're chasing this world. We're chasing that dollar. We're chasing all the material things. We're working on our physical physique and we're working on our minds, but the soul, we're neglecting it. 
So before a situation comes where you might end up in a hospital, you might end up with no legs, you might end up with no eyes, you might end up in a situation that you won't be able to even make a prostration to your Creator. You won't even be able to do the things that you're doing now. Some of the hard hearts that just have gone away, they've, they've made money their God. They've made a woman their God. They've made a man their God. That's all they think about is the next party or the next good time. But as you see, if tomorrow you get hit by a truck or a car, or you fall from a fall, tall building, or you get cancer, or you get a, a disease that you're not, you're, you're terminally ill, and now you, you lose all these wonderful benefits, take advantage of your health now and use it in the proper way. If you're Muslim, you know that as Muslims we need to be praying. We need to be establishing that direct connection with our prayer minimum five times a day. We need to stay away from the things that are displeasing to God Almighty. We need to pray to Him alone and not His creation. We need to follow the Sunnah, the way of the last and final messenger sent to mankind and stay away from gambling and alcohol and drugs, promiscuity. There's no dating in Islam and many of the youth are caught up on the Facebook and using them in an unproductive way. So if you see, if you're a young boy or young girl and you have parents and you're disrespecting your parents, this can be you tomorrow. It can be you tomorrow that now your health, that now you might be playing soccer, baseball, football, and now you get hit and you end up paralyzed or you end up getting struck down and you're in the hospital and it's almost flatlined. Now is the time that angel of death can come at any time. Melakomot, he's there waiting. So are you prepared for that moment, that moment when your soul will be extracted from your body? Are you ready to meet your creator when you're six feet under, five feet under in the ground and the dirt is thrown over your body? Then it's too late. Now is the time. Back here on the Dean Show with David, who went from worshiping a man. We talked about Bob Marley, big icon. You were most prostrating to him, huh? <laughs> doing <laughs> shirk, uh, po uh, polytheism, right? Yeah. Paganism, to doing something that's, you know, in every human being's nature. You know, what Arabs call the fitra. And you didn't become an Arab. You're an American. I'm an American. And we're Muslim. Right? We're ones who have submitted to the will of God. Jesus was a Muslim, Moses was a Muslim, Abraham, and all the messengers of God. People say, what? Yeah. <laughs> they submitted to the will of God. That's what a Muslim is. Exactly. Now, now that you're one who's consciously made a decision to reclaim your heart from loving, you know, the material things and the creation like you should love the Creator, to loving the Creator and wanting to do all the good things that He told you to do. But you see, now sometimes as, as those who are born in a Muslim family, you, you might have got to experience that. So what advice do you have for Muslims who aren't appreciating their Islam? I'm happy you said that. The way I look at it is, um, coming into Islam before Islam, I looked at myself as like a poor beggar almost, looking for crumbs, looking for crumbs. And as soon as I came into the masjid, that's the palace. I'm rich now. The only problem is I realize that sometimes um, some people that's born into Islam, it's kind of like being born like a prince, you know what I mean, a, a princess where you're already used to royalty. So, so you kind of like take it for granted. You don't really know what you have. But this deen, this is the real deal. This is the truth. And, and I kind of thank Allah for um, 
put me outside into in the darkness first to now be able to see the light because now I just appreciate it so much more because I know I know the darkness and believe me that's not the way to go that's going to send you right to Jehinnom but when I see that this is the truth it makes me have an even stronger zeal and want to just learn more and so that's why I want to let the, the Muslims that's born into Islam know that listen don't go astray what you have right here is the truth and there's nothing else but Islam this is the way the truth and the life and um, that's why I, I just want to just reaffirm myself and let people see that listen if this could change me then if you're already in it you it ain't nowhere else to go you know what I mean because um, people should be rushing to Islam rather than trying to see okay what does dunya have for me because it's dunya got death that's what the dunya have for you has straight death and corruption but Islam that could give you eternal bliss in the hereafter inshallah as long as you stay on your deen then Allah will make it easy for you tell us share before we cut out we have a few more minutes about your father who might watch this oh yeah you know tell us I heard that you're also sharing you know um, your experiences with him and how's that coming along it's actually coming along very beautiful, you know, um, he's, he's being real receptive, he's real receptive to Islam, you know, I gave him a Quran, I gave him a, a DVD on Islam, matter of fact, even yesterday, come to speak of it, he was showing me some, um, some um, surahs in the Quran, he was like, hey, hey, yo, Dawood, hey, Doug, you should uh, check this out, because I was talking about some issues I'm having in this and that there, and he showed me uh, surah, surah forewarned, and to help re-edify me, and it was just beautiful, you know what I'm saying, because I see my, my father actually re reading the Quran to me, and I'm I'm like Allah Wakbar, this is beautiful because um I feel hopefully inshallah one day he could actually confirm this be a be a confirmed Muslim say Shahada and hopefully we can see each other both in Jannah one day. But I'm just happy that he's very receptive to this and um hopefully I could just get my whole family into it. I got my one my one cousin I didn't get nothing. This is all Allah. Mashallah, my one cousin took his shahada and now he's a Muslim and hopefully it could just be a domino effect and the whole family could see that Islam is the truth. I know I have to lead by example, I have to be a living example, so now I can't just turn back and do what I used to do because then I'll be a bad example. And the thing I don't like, the thing I, uh, I despise worse is the ones who's misrepresenting Islam. Because then they're the ones who people say, well, what's the difference if this person's doing that and that person's doing this? We, that's why we have to really make sure we stay on our deen so we don't have other people go astray who may be searching for Islam. Yeah. The beautiful thing is that in Islam, you know, if you look at it, so Islam says love all mankind. Right, so how do you feel now for you have, you know, our brothers in humanity and people just don't know, but you were there yesterday, some are here today. So do you get excited now to share because we care and it's an obligation on every Muslim to share the purpose of life. So have you had some of your friends also, we talked about your father, that you've, you know, had an opportunity now to, to share, you know, Islam, submission to the will of God with them and how's that been? It's been all right. It's been pretty good. I've been like with me. Um, my 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 full name is Dawa Dawood Iman, and Dawa is a key part of my life because I feel like we have to give Dawa. I feel like this is an obligation as a Muslim to share this this deen and give Dawa to the people. My friends in particular, they um they're seeing it, but um they're they're more trying to just stay in the dunya. You know what I mean? They rather just party and do whatever it is that that's, that that uh, a police have for them, but um. I mean, inshallah, hopefully they can see more, you know, I mean, they can see that this is the real deal and, you know, polluting your body ain't going to go so far. And, um, but I mean, inshallah, may Allah make it easy for them and may I just keep leading by example so they can see that this deen is for real. I want to thank you and may the creator of the heavens and earth continue to bless you and keep you firm and, you know, help you and help your father. Hopefully he'll see this and he'll get, you know. Uh, one step forward even more so and accept this beautiful way of life and, and, and your, the rest of your family and we make dua for them. Thank you so much again. for inviting me. I'm I'm very appreciative and I'm happy that you even gave me the opportunity. Shukran. Thank you. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Takbir. And another wonderful story, another human being who made that conscious decision I'm not going to worship the creation, but I'm going to worship the creator. Doesn't that make sense? We talked about all of these things, man, that people are worshiping. Sticks and stones and bones and man and women. But when one realizes, uses the common sense, the intellect that the creator has given us, that I don't want to worship the creation, I want to worship the creator. And this life is short, so I better get with it. What's the purpose of life? Why have I been created? To amass a lot of wealth and money? go to parties and nightclubs and just listen to music all day and dancing and dining and what then? 
Death comes, and I didn't live my purpose, and then what? It's all over? No. There's a paradise, and there's a hellfire. What did I work for? Did I work for the paradise? Did I obey my Creator? Did I do all the wonderful things that He's told me to do? Because Islam is the best self-defense. Keeps me away from alcoholism, drugs, and gambling, and fornication, and adultery. Teaches me to be the best human being, to be upright, to be honest, to be just. Doesn't that make sense? Look into Islam. Give us a call. 1-800-662-ISLAM if you want to learn more. And even your criticisms are welcome. Come on. Give us those too. Let's start a healthy dialogue. And we hope to see you next time. Tune in every week to The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you. So I just want to remind everybody, Alhamdulillah, help us to get this message out. Like I said, Take the bumper stickers. You can join us also on Facebook. Like us there. The more people that we have supporting, the more we can use the social media in a positive way to help get the message out. So you can find us on Twitter, on Facebook. Go tonight. Most of the people are using those. And go to our Facebook page. Join it so you can follow our programs. And let's do our best to live this way of life that's pleasing to the Creator before we meet the Creator. And let's connect with Him through the Qur'an. Through the Qur'an, let's learn to implement it in our lives. Let's, let's not let it be a book that we just bring down off the shelf when someone dies and then we open it up, we, Ramadan comes and we get the, the dust off it. So as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Qur'an hujjatul laka aw alayk. The Qur'an will either be an evidence for you or against you. And one of the great Sahaba, uh, Ibn Masood radiallahu anh, he said, commenting on this hadith, he said that the Qur'an will come on the day of judgment and for the person who read it, implemented it, lived by it, it will intercede for that person and guide him into Jannah. But for the one now that turned his back on it, and may Allah protect us from that, that we don't turn our back away. We study hard to become the best in school and pass our exams. But if we neglect the verbatim word of the Creator, the Quran, then it will be an intercession on the Day of Judgment that will lead us into the hellfire. Be it a witness against us. So this small piece of advice for myself first and foremost is that we connect with our Creator through this book, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do we love him? So we have to implement his Sunnah, his way. So let's do that. Let's leave today being better worshippers of the Creator than we were yesterday and keep developing ourselves to be the best human beings that we can and we can only we, can, we the only way we can do that is by following the blueprint otherwise we're following our fancies our whims and desires so let's not do that and hope we can all gather together in jannah and allah the most merciful for, can forgive us for all of our shortcomings me first and foremost so thank you very much for attending i love being in your company alhamdulillah make dua for us and we hope to be with you again sometime in the future assalamu alaikum wow. It's a way of life brought to us by the messenger, best of mankind. Show us the way to Allah's grace. This is the deen, deen of Islam. This is the deen, deen of Islam.